Welcome everybody to the Monday, October 23rd meeting of the Conway Select Board. Uh, call the meeting to order this meeting is being videotaped on Zoom for your viewing pleasure. Uh, first item on the agenda, vote to approve the minutes of September 25th and October 17th. We, we made the corrections that were desired on the 25th. Um, Are you okay with them? Yeah, they look good to me. Yep. So I'm going to, I'm going to approve the minutes of September 25th and October 17th. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We'll assume Eric is silent. Oh, sorry. I just, yeah. The silence is I always forget that if I second it, I still have to do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have three warrants and accounts war uh, payable warrants in the amount of $184,891.62. A payroll warrant in the amount of $137,682.33. Payroll deduction warrant in the amount of $33,927.73. Nothing too terribly exciting in any of those. The accounts payable warrant included the assessment for the tennis court repair. Um, and this was our quarterly pay payments for insurances for the town, the town employees, and school personnel. As well as our first tuition payments at Smith vote for the one student. So I move to approve the warrants. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Meetings attended by select board members. It's been three or four days since we've Last met. <laughs> uh, South River Watershed Harvest Celebration on Saturday. Yeah, there you go. Yes, me too. That one. I had lots and lots of really good feedback. Um, had two different requests from there, from stemming from there, saying, that was so good. Why can't the town buy a tent like that so that we can use that tent whenever we want? And you know, I thought, well, is it does that mean you're volunteering to set it up and take it down each time someone wants to use it and clean it and uh, everything else? Like, I think that's why I kind of the idea of the pavilion, which I think is still a good idea. A billion, a billion, eventually. <laughs> well, uh, what I um. The people I talked to are like, this was so great that we have this like community meal. Why don't we always do this? And the last one that I can remember is when we had the covered bridge dinner. Yeah. Which I think was a fundraiser for the 250th or something. But anyway. Well, it's that started out as a fundraiser for the Festival of the Hills. Then it became a fundraiser for um, the Sportsman's Club. For a couple of years, depending depending on who was running it, and then the person that was running it moved out of town and now lives in Florida. Greenfield. So the key, of course, was that this was all paid for through exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Other people besides us, but but I but it it was cool. Like I think um, anyway, if we get a really solid. New, I mean, since we had this resignation on the Festival of the Hills Committee, um, I think that would be something for them to consider <laughs> as part of the festival or like a fundraiser for the festival. Because the consensus was that we had well over 100 people. Yeah, it was. And the food, um, the food lasted. Bad day. Yeah, on a terrible wet weather day. Mm -hmm. And food lasted right up until the end. Yeah, and, and um people whack like the number of positive comments about the screen table. Yeah. yeah. People really got a kick out of that. Yeah. Well, Al's engage was just amazing on for fun. She really threw this together in like under six weeks, which is just phenomenal. So she deserves all the credit. And hats off to Randy Pro um because oh, yeah. he really worked hard on this. Yeah. And um who's the other one and next day you Talking about the one that is, yeah, she's she's the one that picked up all the food. And all. Yeah, no, I mean they're all 
wasn't how it was. Probably, yeah. That's really bad. <laughs> and but it was great. She was they good. Did, they yes, did a really yes. great job. It was an amazing yeah, event. Yes. And kind of set the gears in motion for thinking about other community events they could do. Yeah. Um, in public comments, is there any public Unfinished business on all things blood related. Anything a new update on that in the three days since we last talked about it? Actually, yes. Um, I've heard from Ryan um, Clary from the Fur Club, and he's finished. Um, they, you know, he's finished doing his part of looking at the Pine Hill region, and he's just having made and review it and then send it off. So I'll over them as soon as we get it. Good, good. Thank you. Um, you want to tackle the tackle the man stop letter now? Well, didn't we talk about this last week? This, yeah, I, this when, looks... and we made changes on it. Now yeah. we're going to talk about whether those changes were to uh, the satisfaction of all concerned and. Um, and or do we want to send it off as is? I was satisfied with it. I mean, unless like the only thing I thought was like we could like bold <laughs> some sections for emphasis, but otherwise, I mean, this has all the changes we talked about last week. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I was the one that wanted to add the paragraph about uh, this bridge repair is not the fault, you know. Is not the fault of the town of Conway. The use of the wrong steel was not the fault of the town of Conway. Um, it, you know, we haven't done any sort of investigation, but it might have been the fault of Mastot, and you should pay for it under moral and ethical reasons. Yeah, yeah but it's. Don't bite the hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I mean, but. Uh, Ron said last week, like. Don't bite the hand. Well, I mean, just like you just don't be like a, I don't know. I <laughs> I feel like he knows what he's talking about from the road department point of view, and what I took away from his comment last week was that perhaps they used the wrong steel 20, 25 years ago, but based upon the best knowledge they had at the time, it's. I mean, we can't really hold that against them. The, the only thing that I that I did have a problem with, but not a problem, but there's one sentence that in the second to last paragraph where while we realize that both towns are ultimately responsible for the bridge. Yeah. My thing about that is that if any type of investigation would reveal that it was a design defect or a failure to um, construct the thing properly, then that's that one sentence would sort of uh, might be problematic. So, the towns are responsible for the bridge, but not for the bridge defects, correct? I guess. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, Shelburne, my understanding is Shelburne's responsible for the bridge itself, and we're responsible for the approach on our side. So, I think it's factually correct. And again, this is just a first communication to Mass DFT. I'm sure we'll have plenty more after. Yeah, I mean, they're going to have to realize this. You added a, a sentence at the end of that paragraph. Perhaps a first step might be to assist with that. I did. But that's because you all said you wanted, that was in my notes, that you wanted. One of you I'm guessing it's not strong enough to fill. <laughs> I don't. I, I. I. I would. If. If they say no, I say. I, I. You know, my thing would be to call the lawyer and see if we have grounds for a lawsuit. Like I'm serious. So. Um, and I think that it, that an investigation would show that we do. But. Um, because it's that's just a strictly you know it's it's possible that in 1997 or 1996. They didn't know the difference between structural steel and waterproof steel, but I kind of doubt that. That's but then that's got to be the case for every other bridge that was. Yeah, maybe. Like 
<laughs> Maybe, but it's a bridge over a river, and either either it was specked and then not put in there, or it wasn't specked and it wasn't caught. But um, regardless, it wasn't. I do know one thing: when they do a major bridge project, it's supposed to last more than twenty three years, and it did. And it's not our fault. So, like that's. And 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 if we do have to pay for it, it's million, it's million plus, like whatever. Right. It's a lot of money, and it's not our fault. It's their fault. So, so, do you want that last sentence to be stronger instead of perhaps a first step? <laughs> Just to be like we request. First, the first step could be. Well, said it might be. Uh, a first step would be to assist, but I mean, this is just a question of semantics at this point. It's really, you know, I don't think we're really literally talking about the town of Conway sewing the state of Massachusetts. No, we're long, we're long overdue for that. No, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't am I allowed to say anything? Yes. So, Sorry. That's great. so I have some experience in these types of situations. This is what's typically called latent defect. So there could be any number of reasons why the bridge failed that has not necessarily think anything to do with the town's legal responsibility for the bridge. For example, who super who was the steel subcontractor and who was the party responsible for managing that entity? If the state built the bridge and the state was managing the contractors and the state placed the purchase orders on the steel suppliers, yes, yes, the state yes. has that responsibility. So I do agree with Phil that it's important to make it clear that at this point in time, from Conway's perspective, we're not accepting any responsibility at this point. Because what happens when you get into these disputes, and I've been in a lot of them with suppliers before I retired, is, you know, you have to do an investigation, go all the way back to the history and the purchase orders and who was responsible for the inspections and you have the inspection records and who bought the steel and who made sure it was the right steel and all that other type of stuff. So that takes a long time. And it makes sense to me for the town to say, based on what we know today, we're interested in pursuing, you know, an answer, but, you know, we're not accepting any responsibility at this point in time. Okay, I like that. It, it is just so you know, it's it's the chair who's in charge of whether or not anybody can speak at the meetings. Oh, I'm <laughs> it's sorry, nothing to do with no, you, asked, you asked me, and I said yes. She asked like, Verity, can I ask oh, me? Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, me no. too, because I did, shouldn't have said yes. We did discuss yeah. this, though, and the question is is it worth going into all that detail right now? It's well, not right, right now, I agree, but at some because point, it's a lot of time. It's going to happen. And the thing is, but maybe it doesn't have to happen. This is just a first letter just saying, you know, uh, we'd like you to start, basically it's saying, we'd like you to give us engineering costs so we can at least begin this whole process. I look at this as the beginning of a negotiation for right. them. To get well, can I be a pain in the butt? Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay, can we remove the first half of the sentence while we realize that both towns are all going to be responsible for the bridge and just include each community has limited financial resources and staffing and get rid of the last sentence. All right. Yeah. So okay. anyway, while we realize that both towns are ultimately responsible for the bridge. And capital each community has Correct. for both communities. And then um and then strike the perhaps the first step. Correct. Okay. So can I make another observation? Yeah. In my experience when I work on these type of things. Right around the time that I retired, there was a major dispute with supplier in the UK for a DOD contract. It's been it's been going on for over a year, and it's not even close to being resolved. And that's just between Rolls Royce and its subcontractor. So there definitely will be an investigation. The state is probably. I would be very surprised if. if Mastot wasn't required to do that under under these circumstances. This can't be the only bridge. 
that, that this like constructed and well, repaired. A, in this I country. agree with that. I mean, this, I'm sure this has happened before. Yeah. And, you know, this type of construction is complicated. There's a lot of subcontractors and contractors involved. So figuring out how it happened and who was responsible for it and where the failure was and so takes and, a long and time. And they have delineated that in a report, which we have not been provided. Uh, well, yeah, I was going to say we haven't got that. Let's give you my point. We have not received it. Can we put that in they, the letter? There is a formal report that they, that they generate when they shut the bridge down and about why and everything. And that's that's where the cause, that, that's why we know what we know. It mm -hmm. was them telling us what's in the report. Well, the town Whether certainly has a right to see that. Yeah. 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 Hey. Yes. Um, but but the, our, our recent history with MassDOT is that they've been nice to us. They're the only state agency that even cares that we exist. And, um, you know, and, and they've said yes to our request for help after the right. July storm. Right, no, I understand that. And so there's... Um, there's a desire to sort of acknowledge that, like we have a relationship with them, that if we ask for help, we think that they're going to say yes. Well, I think it's it's possible to make it clear that these are two separate matters. You know, the, the assistance from the state that we've received is appreciated, and we can we can say that, but then also saying this this is a serious matter that needs to be on its own track. Yeah. All right, I think we did that in the first paragraph. I'm trying to read to you, but um, uh, the second paragraph, the town of Conway is greatly appreciated all the aid right. we received from MassDOT over the past year from the installation of the temporary bridge on the Fallen Road to all the aid in repairing our roads after the July floods to the current work being done to install a permanent bridge on the Fallen Road. Um, and although the town has not received the full bridge, we expect to report our understanding. It's the approach on the Conway side, which needs repairs. We don't even know that for sure because we haven't seen, seen the report. But um, yeah, I, I think with, with the edits suggested by Chris, that sort of leaves open our, preserves all of our rights. This is more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And, mm -hmm. Which is what we want to do without, without, but without biting the hand. Which is also what we want to do, not to. Right. Yes. <laughs> um, so, if you want to do it that way, rather than wait two weeks to sign it, um, I'll just have this ready in the office. Yeah, I can correct it. Okay. Okay. Great. Oh, sorry. So I, yeah, I preempted the vote. Sign it with <laughs> with the with the correct. changes. Yes, I move okay. that um, we sign this letter. After Randy makes the changes we just discussed. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. Thanks. You're here for the one talk about the one. The one. I was just here because I had a capital improvements meeting right after. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So I thought I would sit in. Yeah, great. <laughs> um, so the yeah the review of current ward of foreign article submissions for special town meeting. Um, this is a very rough. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. I just wanted it's not legal language by any means. I just wanted people to know what's yeah. on the, the radar. And it's not the order it would be in. <laughs> Yeah, the, of course, the big, big one is Article 11. Which we may not have to do. If, yeah, but this is Conway, and this is 2023. Well, why would we nothing's have been to? Going, it's nothing's well, been going good for us. I did, I did mention in my town administrator update um, that the numbers I've gotten from Ron, um, to date, um, we have spent $203,614.47. Right. He expects, uh, excuse me, to spend another $315,000 by December 31st for a total of $519,000. At the moment, we do have enough cash reserves um, to be able to carry that. So, and I had this as, as a placeholder because if we hear from the state before Thanksgiving, that they are going to come through and mm -hmm. 
pay for this, then we wouldn't have to borrow. I just wanted to put it in there just, you know, because in another two weeks, you're going to close the warrant. So I just yeah. wanted to make sure that it was in there in case we need it. But we do have half a million dollars. That well, we could the ARCA funds still haven't been spent. They've been obligated. Right. But we still have almost 400000 just ARCA funds that can be used. Well, as happened. cash, yeah. Like, this but, is just. This is not saying it's being taken. You yeah, no, but I mean, just of, of all the various pots of money. Yes. Yes. So in other words, what does Jan have at her fingertips that she can use to pay the debt expender? So we could to use. Get it so we could use ARPA funds to pay for. But then we. No, it's not an ARPA vote. It just means. No. Those, yeah. No, yeah. I know, but I mean, but basically, but that's where the money for stabilization her. funds. In other words, yeah. where she has cash on hand that she can pull from. To be able to cover the debt expense. But all that that does is delay the need to borrow. Right, exactly. And well, or get the money from the state. And that's, I right. mean, Ron's estimating that that's what it's, I mean, it could be beyond what Ron's estimate is. He knows what he's spent so far, and he has this an is, estimate of what he's going to spend. And this is his estimate for um, just over a half a million by December 30th. So when we discussed the number today, it's really kind of difficult to know how much we yeah. need to get us through the June period. I mean, it's, yeah. Part of that also is reading the tea leaves and what is the cost of money anticipated to be, for, you know, this December versus a year or two from now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But and but right now, money is very expensive. A couple of years ago, it wasn't. Maybe in a couple of years, it won't be again. I don't know. Um, but that's something to begin to get yeah. your heads around. And this would just be short-term borrowing. Yeah. Yeah, the state does, but you know, the the ARPA money, if we use it here, of course, and we have to borrow for the public safety building. Public safety building. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, but um, yeah, I'm not in any way suggesting to use ARPA. I was just saying that, but in terms of pots of cash, that are, yeah, if we had to, if we had to, but. And I believe the current estimate, although this is just very rough information, is that the state mass DOT has already spent about a million dollars to come on just on the roads, repairs, supplies. You can probably end up doing that. Yeah, that's dropping the bucket. Yeah, exactly. Like, dropping thank the bucket. Thank you, but. <laughs> yeah, the, the failure to get the disaster declaration is catastrophic. Mm -hmm. Um, and the, the, the delay in the state su supplemental, I note that they were really quick to come up with supplemental funding for the farmers in the state. Not the rest of us. There is, there is what you don't see on the warrant is um, a school item. If you remember, the our accountant flagged the Use of the rebate uh, yes. for the additional mini splits in the grammar school um, because the receipts for the mini splits that we paid for didn't say the words will include all rebates as for, to you to spend on additional mini splits. So they went ahead and did that because it didn't cost the town anything. And I think the school committee voted and told them to. Um, it turned out to be not quite, not quite budgetarily kosher. So there will be a item on there, and the superintendent and principal will have to come uh, to get permission to spend what they already spent. Basically, which didn't cost the town anything. Right. Yeah, that's a point. But I love that our accountant was so. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the other three towns all all it went through the other three towns, even though it was noted in each of those towns that it wasn't quite kosher, but it was just okay. He was right, you can't fall. He was correct. No, exactly. I was like, I was like, what do you want in the count? It's like <laughs> yes. Um yeah, that's the uh
the your Article 7, you're talking about not having to mail them again? Well, my understanding is that the last time this was put before town meeting, it was not mailing the warrant either, which is not what I'm recommending. The reason I don't want, if, if we if town meeting approves, the reason I don't want to mail it out is because it's so expensive. And, you know, they could still be available to people to pick up. Um, yeah, they voted that down last time. My understanding was that they voted it down when it was combined, but not with just not mailing out the town report. And there was, of course, we would mail out the warrant to every household. So but this is just to not mail the town report. Be, yeah, it would just be, yeah, because it adds so much weight, it adds so yeah. much postage. It's, in, you know, it's not like it wouldn't be available. Plus, we're going into a more electronic age. We can stick it up on the website. Yeah, I, I like the town before getting mail. I really do. Yeah. I, I, you know, I do too, but it's if it's going to save the town money. That's and, kind of why I put it on. And it's still going to be available, you know. Can I make another suggestion, Phil? Somebody wants it mailed, they pay for the yeah. You want that convenience. Mm -hmm. Everything else you order online will pay for it. You pay for it. I mean, that's one way to look at it. The other way to look at it is that the cover, the Rockwell cover of the Saturday Evening Post, a town meeting, has everybody in the audience holding up their copy of the report, shaking it. Well, that's the true, story. but the town I lived in before this one, it was not mailed. It was just available at all the public buildings, and you went and picked it up. And I've seen quite a few towns that do it that way. So it's just a way to try to save money. If everybody wants it mailed, then... I totally appreciate the nostalgia of it because I have every single town report from like see? the first 10 years that I lived in this town when I was having kids because I was like, it was really cool to see, like, oh, look, like, <laughs> like I was in a publication, but I, it, it is, I mean, it's huge. It's, and well, it is a lot the, of money. It's the annual report that's huge. What's the, what's the report that we generate for supplemental town meeting? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is, this is just right. about the annual calendar. Right. Tied to like the dump sticker. You like your dump stickers and sign up to get your report mail. And pick one up at the transfer station. Right? <laughs> Everybody goes there eventually. That's, that's a good idea. <laughs> it's just, put them in a bag. Yeah. Yeah. And then they can read it and recycle it right exactly. away. Exactly. Put it back. Yeah. You know. Recycling. <laughs> I'm all about saving money, even if it's a little bit of money. Me too. Um, so, yeah, very preliminary. We'll see. Are you going to reach out to Shelly? Yes, yes. Yeah, I got my note on here for that, for the, that article. <laughs> Down in administrator update. Yeah, a double pager. It's got a double <laughs> cider. It was a good one. It was just, it was just how you cut and paste it though. <laughs> <laughs> I actually only did in the bullets there. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I just wanted I just wanted everybody to see. So this is the two grants that the board has asked me to work on. And basically, the takeaway from this is that I feel strongly we need to have a group of people working on this. Yeah. It's not something that I can make these decisions for the town by myself. So, and I really, with when it comes to the van one, you know, doing the more research through the through the grant application, it said, well, check this first and check this first and check this first. And when I looked on that second link right there that says Conway and Page equals one, it was a list of all these services that are supposedly provided right now in the town. Now, I'm not convinced that we're getting those services, but yeah. that's my next step is to be talking to them and say, um, but the grant made sure to say, look, you don't duplicate services. We're not going to get this grant if we're just, right. you know. And then there's, okay, how do we, where do we house it? Where do we find the drivers? We've got to do the training. How much is it going to cost us for liability? There's a lot of things that go into having a van. Plus, in speaking with Jennifer Remillard, um, 
you know, it occurred to me that maybe we could get in on their grants and have it help calmly as well. Because mm -hmm. they're already in on their other grant. Right, and that that would be the most cost-effective way to try to get services if they're truly not being um, provided right now, which, you know, I am, like I said, very doubtful that we're actually getting the services that are done. Oh, my goodness. Well, it says we do, but I know of people who have tried and not gotten it. So I think having more conversations with her would be a good first step for that. And then same thing with the wood bank. I, you know, um, there are there are a lot of things that need to get developed before we can even apply. Um, I do have the the liability waivers, kind of like the easiest part. Um, but and as far as I understand, unless um, the two the two people we had before, I've only heard that one is still willing, and then somebody else who's not a resident. But I haven't spoken with them since we had that meeting like a year ago. Yeah, she's very willing. She is, but she's the only person, right? And her son, right? But he's not a Conway resident, so yeah, he's not a Conway resident. So, property owner, though. Is he? Yeah. yeah, he's even though he's not a resident. Oh, okay. He owns cool. property. property. All right, so. perfect. So, yeah, so, but we would need more people than that. So, I don't know if we want to just put out a. Maybe we just like put a flyer at the transfer station. Yeah, right. I feel like, I mean, we could Honestly, yeah. Um, just get the husband to sign on the dotted line, too, and just have the three of them. I think we got it. Well, yeah, but wouldn't you want it more well rounded than well, yeah. family? Yeah, no, I, no, I mean, I think yeah. we should, like, but not that I have anything against that, but you might want more than one voice. No, I agree, but if there's a minimum number of people we need to get this started, I would start with who we have available. Okay, that's my. I mean, I would even. And I wanted to talk to Russ French about it because um, he would be the vendor for all the equipment that we would use the grant on. Mm -hmm. um, and there's people that work for him uh, that are working with you know, those sorts of people that would be natural for this. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, well, so that's the other thing. It's not just getting the working group who would develop the plan. Then we got to figure out how to get the volunteers who are going to do the work. So, I mean, there's there's a lot of planning that needs to go into this. Right down to the one that really has me a little, I mean, I'll, I'd be interested to see what templates other towns use, but how do you decide? Who gets the wood? Is it just a lottery system? Is it you know? Yeah, so they've done. And is it delivered things. or do they pick up? I mean, Both. there's a lot of different. Both. They you know. know. So, right. But the thing is that Conway will have to develop its plan before they can apply for the grant. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. We, yeah. We were encouraged to feedback from <laughs> Leverett's. The Leverett mm -hmm. did all left everything out, and now but is it Buckland or Selburn that's doing it too? But, yeah, Buckland's got it. So between both of them. But that is, you know, like I, when I, I think that it should, I, I personally think that it, we should start, I, I would think starting out by saying it's available for anybody um, as opposed to low income, proof of low income, whatever. Well, I think um, first we have to put out a call for volunteers to yeah. like work on the project. So, yeah. So my thought was that we get this group working on it and that they, Make recommendations to the select board about those kinds of policies yeah. and how it would work. You know, and that would be the time for us to have a conversation about how you want to run. And you know, there's logistics involved, and you know, and they're people they're the people who know about the equipment and what's needed. And yeah. but then the other point that I brought up, and and you know, I, I just don't know <clears throat> where the wood's coming from because we did have this discussion when we talked about it a while back, and most of the wood that the highway department is removing is dead wood or diseased wood, and it's not suitable for burning in home wood stocks. Most, but not all. Most, but not Even all. Even one large tree is going to produce lots, two cords of wood. But that we can figure out. It seems like just for the purpose of applying the grant, first we need account committed volunteers. <laughs> so that's the right. But they thing. do ask you how many cords of wood you're going to produce. So we do kind of have to have a sense. I mean, they ask for a lot of detailed stuff. Six. Six. Good number. Yeah. 
Timing of distribution, whenever. Yeah, as needed. <laughs> but I mean, but but obviously, it seems to me like that's the first, like that's the first step before we can even apply for this grant is to get the people together who are going to help decide the bit. I mean, you, like you can't even really apply for the grant unless right we have like the people to start with. So. And that's kind of the same thing with the van. One of the things I forgot to mention is that you know they want you to to include potential riders in the planning, and the Mass and Motion Group, but just on the survey at the Festival of the Hills. So I'm in touch with them to see, and I think Survey Monkey's ready. That's that. So I think that account's finally, hopefully, um, ready for the town to use. So he can hopefully massage the data and then we'll see, how, you know, where the need is and then we can start pulling in people to talk about that. And then no matter what, that would be a great thing to do because if, for instance, FERDA does actually, are supposed to be supplying us with these services, well, we can get a little group of citizens together and really, you know, um, anyway. I would say let's just like put up a flyer at the transfer station at Bakers. I mean, just asking people who, okay. you know, promoting people to, get interested in a wood bank because I think we need a critical mass to even apply for the grant in the first place. I could put it on the on the pile of wood that's still sitting there from when they had a wood burning stove at the chance. That's not a bad idea. Thank you. Um, yeah, actually they should but we could put it in the current so, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, and some of us that like have pellet stoves might get a wood stove too if there's a wood uh -huh. that are available for the chicken. Up. Okay, so you see I'll be away Wednesday morning and then I'll be Thursday. And then I'm sure you know that we, we have the position already on the books for the administrative assistant to the boards and committees. Um, Louise did design, but she still does it for the pun mm -hmm. But um, I know that Ashfield, Paul McClatchy and I have been speaking um, about, they still have the need. And it's a difficult thing to find somebody that will do this kind of scattered, you know, yeah. meetings here and there. And I suggest that we all should definitely be doing a, at least a hybrid meeting for all of those so that, because it'll make hiring the person easier. If in the evenings, they don't have to travel through snowy, yeah. you know, they can just sit home and take notes. Anyway, so I'm working with the planning board of Huncombe and Ashfield, and we'll come up with a job description and then go from there. Um, and it's nice because Paul was suggesting that we do a shared services agreement and that Ashfield take the lead. So it's great. Make my life a lot easier. <laughs> and then, of course, there was about the harvest meal. I told you about the road repair. And then the last thing was that unfortunate information that you already mentioned about the board members for the Festival of Hills, and I would like to, if it's all right with the board, just put something up on the website too. So well, I, you know, I think this is also an opportunity now to go, to make it back the way it was and bring the Festival of the Hills back as a town community. And it is, the one that showed me how to do this is was our DLA circuit rider. There is a specific law that allows for scholarship committees to be town committees and there's it's basically they wouldn't have to change much except they'd have to do the open meeting law on the agenda and all that and that was their but that was a big that was a big ask for it, I mean, that's what i remember like i mean to come i mean it, it doesn't seem like a lot to us but to comply with open meeting law you have to post your agenda with them a certain i mean that was that was a big deal for volunteers to have to do that. It was, but the thing about it is that it would the, right now they have to they have that as a private committee they're having to pay for insurance. Um, they may or may not get a bill for town services for police and ambulance, but they have to be ready to pay it. Um, and um, what was their other? But, but basically, they start out behind the eight ball, whereas if they're a town committee, they start out at zero every year, and the money's raised and actually just goes to scholarship instead of. So that that's there was a financial reason that it made sense. Yeah, but and at the time that they were kicked off, it was not a voluntarily voluntary or pleasant process. Um, 
Um, it, it didn't, that was, yeah. Um, and now I remember that, but I, but I do also remember that, like, that's, it is kind of a big deal to, for a small volunteer committee to comply with open meeting. Maybe, maybe. I mean, I wouldn't, I, like, if Pixie's the only one left, I would say let's ask her if that's, if they want to come back under the ages of the town, but it's, I, my understanding from chatting with her is really more that she's willing to hang in there to get a new board going. I would say that would be a discussion once they get a new board. You know, I'm not sure that anybody would have the bandwidth to do both at the same time, get new members and then. And then, yeah, figure yeah. out restructuring. Yeah. It is. <clears throat> Okay, all, this, is a, this has also been, um, you know, uh, them, members resigning, but then still participating has also been happening for years too. But it's a lot and it's stressful. And the nature of volunteerism has changed. People don't do that ahead of time. They don't. You, know, all, you, you just keep your fingers crossed and hope they show up. Yeah. And they do. It's Oh, I did have one uh, just because people in my neighborhood are asking. Um, select board member comments and concerns. Good. Um, the bank remediation at the end of Delaware. Oh, the, what's that, what's going on? Yeah, with that? that like wasn't that was supposed to happen this spring? It was supposed to happen this spring. Um, Ron and I have asked um, Nima for an extension. Well, it was supposed to start. It wasn't supposed to finish right, until the end of uh, yeah. August of next year. We have asked for an extension until I think it's December of twenty five. Um, because there was absolutely no way with everything. Same thing that happened with the transfer station that was supposed to get done this year as well. And then with the floods, it was you know, everything just got pushed back. So, was it that the work that Nina's going to do, or, or whoever's going to do the work, it requires coordination with the town? The, the highway, highway department, department is doing most of it. Oh, the high, okay, all right. Yeah, and that's and that's kind of it's like it's like that's our match, and that's so that's literally okay. why both of those projects got. Off because it's the highway department that's doing the labor. So, okay. Okay. Just that's that's time. But since you brought up Nina, <laughs> um, if we could uh, send a letter to the director general of Nima, uh, Dawn Brantley, I remember her name. Yes, you um, brought it up several times. <laughs> um, if we could uh, remind her that we wrote to her mm -hmm. a very yeah, articulate, specific that. letter. Several weeks ago, or more, I've not heard anything, and that we would appreciate a response to our prior correspondence. Is there any way we can send the letter soaking wet? <laughs> <laughs> or giant box of oh, water. No, the, I had. <laughs> I just I just had a box of Mrs. Gordon's fish sticks with the guy in the ring and the, the <laughs> ring and the umbrella the, the whatever. We should take the letter to the cardboard cutout of the Mrs. Gordon's fish stick. <laughs> well, I'm I mean, do you want me to write a letter and do it that way or just send her an email or call her? I mean, you know, I'm just check because she's not gonna start with email in 48 yeah. hours yeah. if no yeah. reply, mail. The thing Snail in these mail. days, I mean, even the mail, even the letter, it's it's a letter you write that's then sent to you. Know, so you know, can we send a uh, certified? I could send it if you want to yeah. send it. I yeah. mean, I could. That way, we know that she got it. I I think she responded that she did get it. I can't remember. I think she responded that she got it. And that's it. And yeah, that's her response. Well, no, she she was letting us know that she was okay. it. <clears throat> Um, I'll add on to this train. Uh, the informational board out there. Is there any way we can you utilize the other side of it that's facing the road? I don't know. I mean, can people? It's not accessible for people to walk around the back. And I it's think not, but people can see it when they're driving by. So stuff like the wood bank, maybe 
volunteers needed wood bank, something like that. It's just ugly as is right now. Oh, yeah, but because you're seeing the back end of it. Lord was hoping to have um, some artwork done on it. Oh, okay. So symbol yeah. of the town, whatever, something on yeah, it. Yeah, something. Yeah. Okay. You're that right, wouldn't be is. that wouldn't be happening until warmer weather though. Right. As long as there's a plan, because acrylic needs 50 degrees. It just seems half, yeah, it seems halfway done right now when you're yeah. looking at it. Yeah. And there may not be a local artist that's willing to do it for the uh, zero compensation that's offered. Right. <clears throat> Who's our one local, Anna Harvester? Right? That's one. That's one. Yeah. She's good. So our stuff. Probably got him up with that. There you go. Yeah, we have Adam. That just got um, yeah. Um, the mail the Eversource, of course, is doing more vegetation work. National Grid is also doing vegetation work. We got that a couple weeks ago, too. Um, by vegetation work, I mean spraying glycophosphate. That's what I mean. But they can do that. They're allowed to do that, and we can't say no. We can't regulate their behavior in any way. Thank you. Thank you, Kamala. All we can do is write a strongly worded letter, yes. <laughs> which we've done in the past. Yes. Um, and that didn't go up too well. Either. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, any announcements? The next meeting. So, um, Tentatively announced the meeting for next Monday, although we might be able to put it off for an additional week. No, it was the 13th we talked about maybe having to do. What are we doing on? I don't think we were going to. I have the 13th on my calendar. Because the, the, the calendar that I gave you all said that, you know, we could yeah. love to close the warrant on the 6th, but if you still need another week. And do pencil in the 13th, which mm -hmm. I'm hoping doesn't happen because I'll have to drive back and pencil in the mm -hmm. And the sixth right. I can do, I'm just remote. All right. So next meeting, November 6th, Monday, November 6th here. Move to adjourn. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye.